Welcome back. I'd like to start by thanking the volunteer crew and Shaw staff that makes this program happen every couple of weeks. It is Wednesday, June the 19th, and my guest in this segment is Vicky Chi, and we're going to be talking about Qigong, which is an ancient Chinese exercise and health program. Yes. So, Vicky, welcome. Thank you, Jack. And what uh, can you tell us about Qigong? Yeah, before I tell uh, something about uh, this style of Qigong, because many, many different, as, as everybody knows, many, many different types of Qigong, including Tai Chi. Uh, before I talk uh, about uh, the Qigong, I would like to show a movement, a very important movement in this style of Qigong. So, uh, can you shake your hand? Yes? Yes, very good. Not uh, this way, okay? Yeah. yeah has to be up and down, not the left and side. Okay, this way. Yeah, mainly uh, move the wrist, yeah, and the finger, fingertip, yeah. Not uh, this, yeah, this way, both. And don't move your arm, don't move your arm, just uh, like this, okay? Yeah, so this is a very important um, technique uh, in this style of Qigong. I'm going to bring a Qigong workshop into Victoria by the end of July. Hopefully, I can help more people uh, to be healthier and uh, happier. And uh, so, uh, so, and this is the one of the important essential um, uh, movement. Okay, you only you can do this uh, anytime. Okay, and you can walk, wave, wave. Yeah, any yeah, or this way or this way. Okay. Uh, and I've been doing it, and yeah, it's fun. This technique is called the shaking palm uh, uh, technique yeah, in this Qigong. Uh, so, talking about the Qigong, what is Qi? Okay, Qi and the Gong is different meaning. Qi, a Gong, a gong means uh, uh, like a, a technique, Gong, but the Qi is the uh, vibration of, of the energy, vibration. So, for example, uh, you can feel your heart beat. You can feel. Uh, we we know we have a brain wave, right? And uh, when you are hungry, you feel gurgle gurgle in the stomach. Okay, all this and uh, some uh, as 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 everybody some know uh, Chinese. Uh, traditional uh, medicine a doctor, they feel how your body organ uh, work by checking your pulse, okay? And the pulse, uh, you can feel the vibration. That's qi, work on your body. And, and the qi, we can say it's a, a, a vital qi or essential qi. And uh, so that's, that's wh wh why uh, when we do this, vibrate, Okay, we actually we open and um, and uh, open the body and let the chi start to uh, work more, and that's why uh, people practice qigong uh, to get a better health. Yeah, that's why I wanted to bring qigong, another style of qigong, into Victoria. Yeah. Now I've seen the style of qigong mm -hmm. uh, that your teacher from Taiwan is going to show. It's quite simple. Yes. And yet, when you were in Taiwan mm -hmm. taking a class, the people who were taking that class said that the impacts on their health were very, very diverse. Everything from lowering blood pressure to, I mean, even though it's a very, very simple thing, and mm -hmm. you know, it's a ver variety of movements, the results can be very, very helpful. Yes. And healthy. Uh, yes. The vital chi, uh, people will think, oh, it's very uh, abstract. Yeah, actually, uh, in Western medical uh, term, uh, peop, uh, they use uh, immune system. So, uh, actually, the vital chi uh, is in, within the doctor, the doctor within. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, you can say similar as our uh, immune system, but a lot of problem, if we don't have time to heal the problem naturally, properly, 
or you don't have energy to heal the problem, all the problem will be hidden in the system. Yeah, and then doesn't show up. And that's why when we have soreness or achy or problem or illness, actually that's the body try the vital chi immune system or immune system try to heal the problem. Yeah, and and that's why you have the all the symptom. Uh, for example, some people say, uh, some people told me, after when they have day off, like a holiday, they started to got sick. Yeah, a lot of people that happened to a lot of people. Yeah, when they have holiday, they are relaxing, no work, no stress, and then the body started to heal, so they got uh, sick. That's me for sure. I really, <laughs> okay, yeah, that happened to a lot of people. Yeah, so so that's the. Uh, so, yeah, that's why I wanted, and when, uh, actually I learned this Qigong in February in Taiwan. And uh, when I started, started to do it, uh, my left shoulder feel very sore because I had an injury about it on this side 20 years ago, but never, never got healed 100%. So when I do this Qigong, this style, okay, when I do up here, I feel pain. Yeah, every time. Okay, I feel pain. Uh, but so since February, up to about a couple of weeks ago, when I I do this, I don't feel pain anymore. So that's I got healed. Yeah, that's the that's that's the way how the the vital chi heal the body, because the vibration more open and then try to. Uh, fix the problem, and that's the problem. That's why the chi we can call the uh, doctor within it just to heal the problem yes. naturally by doing this uh, qigong. And within mm -hmm. in in Western medicine, mm -hmm. the idea of the doctor within goes back to the time of Hippocrates, thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, of course it is the doctor within yes. that either cures us or doesn't. What we can assist. But the magic of the doctor within, uh, how it works, yes. God only knows. When it truly is amazing. Yes, when people do this style of qigong, uh, my teacher told me in the class, uh, she said, when you do this, yeah, some people pain here, feel pain here. Some people feel pain here. Okay, some people feel pain here. So it's all different meridians. So that when you feel, uh, not really pain, it's like an ache or soreness. Yeah, and then uh, my teacher say, wherever you feel the ache or soreness, uh, that means that area is blocked. Yeah, and this area can connect, connect it to the organ, because according to the meridians, it go from limb to the in, in internal organs. And when yeah. you talk about meridians, the meridians are the kind of invisible channels along yes. which it's the chi. It's a vital chi channel. Yeah, the chi flows. Yeah, exactly, vital chi channel. Yeah, from external uh, to I internal. Yeah, that, that's the vital chi channel. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to talk about what we feel after we practice. Qigong, but maybe you've already talked about that, I'm not sure. Yes, some people feel uh, achy here, but uh, some people feel achy on the back, yeah, or in, or in the stomach, can be in stomach too, yeah, so it all depends on where you have the potential problem, yeah, because a lot of people, when they got sick, they say, how come I got this problem, yeah, it never, the body never, never tell me. Uh, I have the problem here, big problem, including cancer, right? Yeah, actually, the body has been remind the you many, many times. Yeah. But we don't see from it. From aching, by aching, or, but the, we just have no time to treat it. Yeah, we are, we are under stress. Yeah, we didn't sleep very well. We don't sleep very well. Yeah, all these stop your, your immune immune system, stop, stop the vital chi uh, to treat you, to, to heal your problem. Yeah, that's why uh, when we are doing this type of qigong, a lot of 
potential problem, okay, will show up, show up, and then you feel achy here and there. Yeah, when I do this qigong, uh, it really help my sleep deeply, and also I lose some, 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 some uh, weight. bloated, okay. bloated and weight here. Yeah. All sounds good. But when I do the this qigong, my knee quite sore for a couple of months. Yeah, not all the time, but uh, I feel more soreness. Yeah, and because my father didn't doesn't have a good knee, so I thought maybe I already have potential problem there. When I'm 10 years older, this may sh tell me. Yeah, I have the I have I already have the problem here. Yeah. So. You want mm -hmm. to talk a little bit about um, cold food and cold water? Yes. Uh, in Chinese medicine theory, uh, as I say, qi, okay, we have two different kinds of qi. One is warm qi, warmer qi, one is cold qi or colder qi. Yeah, four season can tell you what is cold qi, what is warm qi. Winter, cold qi, right? And the summer, warm qi. The body, naturally wanted to have more warm chi. That's why most people like summer, like to be warmer, but they don't really like winter. And all the, all the growth, okay, flowers, vegetables, all grow in the summer more, right? And the winter away less. And the, in winter, all the trees, some trees, they look like they are, they are dying, yeah. So, that's why I will suggest, first suggestion is don't drink cold water. Don't take cold shower. Yeah, and uh, keep everything warm and to make your body can function better. When you drink a, 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 a cup of ice water, the cold energy, the cold chi, okay, will make your blood vessel smaller. For example, if you feel cold, what what do you do? You will do this, right? You will tighten your body because you are cold, same as your blood vessel, same as your nerve system. When, you, when cold energy hits you, okay, you drink cold water in. The cold water spread into the whole body. Wherever you have pain, more pain. That's why a lot of people, when they have pain, they put a heat, heat pad, right? Right there, they feel much better because the heat opens the blood vessel. And we're going to have to stop circulation right there. better. Okay. So everybody, sure. no cold beer <laughs> and less ice cream. <laughs> These yes. things are impossible. Yes. But give it a try for a few weeks. Give it a try for a few weeks. No, less cold food, less cold drinks, and see what happens. Vicki, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum. Thank you. We're going to show a short video by Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Uh, that's a group of 3,000 professional engineers and architects who say that the official 9-11 story is impossible. They say, and this is 3,000 architects and engineers, they say that the World Trade Center buildings that came down on 9-11 were brought down but not by the airplanes that hit them, but by a controlled demolition. They were brought down by explosives planted beforehand in the buildings. Think of what it means when all these years later and all the trauma that has occurred because of 9-11, when our media and our politicians will not tell us about this. So here is a short video by architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. According to lead investigator Sham Sunder of the National Institute for Standards and Technology, NIST, World Trade Center 7 collapsed at freefall acceleration for more than 100 feet of its fall. What does the speed of the collapse reveal to us? Essentially, in less than seven seconds, uh, Tower 7 came down upon itself. It's just like taking your car keys out and just dropping them. That's how fast the building came down for over 100 feet. Which, and the only way you can get that is when there is zero resistance. And so what we're looking at is a building just coming straight down, falling right through itself with zero resistance. 
buildings don't have zero resistance, which is why you feel comfortable walking into a building. This building had 40,000 tons of structural steel in its structural system, and that is intended to keep it from going anywhere. I'd heard people say, well, it came down at free fall or close to free fall and so forth, so I decided I'd measure it myself. I had a simple tool at the time called a physics toolkit, which allowed me to take a video and put a dot on each frame to follow the motion of things. And I realized that it's actually coming down at free fall, pretty much dead on the acceleration of gravity. Well, NIST, in their final draft, was saying that the building came down 40% longer than free fall time. Uh, how can such a publicly visible, easily measurable quantity be set aside? A free fall time would be an object that has no uh, structural components below it. There was a structural resistance that was provided in this particular case. He was making our case for us. You can't have free fall when there's support. And in the final report, they modified it and they actually admitted there was a period of free fall involved. But they never changed their model. Like, how do you all of a sudden allow for free fall when they just got done explaining how it couldn't have been in free fall? NIST is telling us that the building below it ceased to exist uh, for the first few seconds of the collapse of the building. Well, things in physics just don't cease to exist and cease to resist the forces that are on them. The building didn't disappear so the building can fall for 100 feet at free fall speed. That's impossible. That's a, a violation of, of the fundamental law of physics that says that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. If floors fall, they tend to fall and are braced by the floor directly beneath it. And there's some delay there. Because of redundancy, because of uh, all the other columns in the building that were not affected. Even if a floor were to collapse, it still wouldn't be able to collapse all of the connections simultaneously at the rate that it did without secondary exposure.